All right, so this is a suggestion via a donation. Now, the name of the video is uh, 10 Animals You Definitely Forgot Existed. Uh, this is coming from Casual Geographic. Let's check it out. Uh, uh, hi. Uh, Quick question. What do you think is the most popular animal in the world? Well, a cat. Well, I was curious, and after extensive research, I found popular? a map. A world map that used Google Keyword Planner and cross reference searches for 170 different animals across 180 countries to determine the most loved animal in each country. Okay. For example, okay. monkeys won over Australia, pandas have Indonesia in a chokehold, and apparently my mother country of Senegal loves hippos. No comment on that. But you want to know what the overwhelming favorite was? The runaway <laughs> winner was, by far, the tiger, with 44 countries riding for them. I knew it was a cat. At number two with 28 countries were hippos, proving that you gotta be famous to be infamous. These were the top 10 animals according to this map. It's okay. cool, but it's not perfect. The right. lion is a national animal for 19 different countries, a record, but they just barely made the top 10. But then this got me thinking, what about all those animals that don't get nearly enough talk? What is that? I don't know. Time. Well, this video is for them. Here's 10 animals. Okay, this is a... Uh... Uh, whatever. Animals you oh, either Poppy? didn't know existed, forgot about, what? or that. Bro, as a giraffe's face and like a. Bro, what it? How did you even make this? Oh, is oh what? The... Oh, look, I'm trying to, I'm trying, I'm trying to mentally understand what's happening here. Did a giraffe mate with a zebra that mated with a horse? Maybe. Yeah, that's yeah. It was a giraffe, uh, horse, a zebra mating session, menagerie. That my personal bias, which we talked about more. And starting off is the maned wolf. It's one of those animals whose name does nothing for it, since it's not a wolf, not a fox, or even a Latin coyote in black knee highs. Apparently, they're just themselves, and they are literally built different. They're tall enough to look down on some Great Danes, but at about 50 pounds soaking wet, they're more in the weight class of a Basset Hound. How you can dwarf Scooby yet get bodied by Snoopy's depressed cousin is unconscionable. And virtually every picture of a maned wolf looks AI generated. It's a genetically sequenced identity crisis, so it's only right that it sounds like one. So it's... So... So it's not a real animal? Like natural Is it a animal? roar? Is it a bark? Is it a cry for help or the damnation of a higher being? Nobody knows. It's obviously a bark. Not even him. Also, you probably heard that the main wolf smells like Snoop Dogg salad. This is 100% true. In fact, they've even gotten some zoos raided by police looking for cannabis. But all they found was a Urine. canine mid piss. If the canine family had a cookout, this ginger still puppy would be the one pulling up with veggie burgers. Most of a main wolf's grocery list includes fruits and veggies, with Lobera, aka the wolf's apple, getting its name from this portrait mode fox constantly eating it. They also made history as the first wild animal to be successfully treated through stem cell therapy after one got hit by a truck. All in all, I think they're pretty cool. I'd call them a dog that can't dog, but that's more accurate for the raccoon dog. Another animal you probably forgot existed. Most people know about them from two things, the raccoon Tanuki dog. suit from Mario and their role in Japanese mythology as the Bakke Tanuki. And due to certain aspects of that myth and the fact that I'd like to stay monetized, that's all I'm gonna say about them. Cause okay. unlike them, I don't have the balls to test guidelines. Raccoon dogs aren't even Right. Remotely related to raccoons, and basically stole their entire flow through convergent evolution. And they're this is canines, this meaning they sit at the same lunch table no. as wolves, dogs, and coyotes. But their closest the cousins are dog. foxes. Which reminds me, close your eyes. There's no jump scare coming, I swear. This will be fun. Just, just close them real quick. All right, everyone ready? I'm not closing okay. my eyes, bro. <laughs> what? Like that was not honking. the sound of two clowns with marital issues. That was what a raccoon dog roll call sounds like. You see what I mean by the whole dog that can't really dog properly thing? They're the right. only canines that hibernate. Seriously, they're the only one. They're that special. They can okay. also climb trees because of course they can. They're of willing course. swimmers because sounds about right. And right. they may or may not have been responsible for a certain virus putting the world on timeout. But considering the war crimes committed against them for what? their fur, I'm willing to look past it. There is no looking past this E.T. looking antelope. This is a Saiga, and that is 100% unfiltered. They really do look like Star Wars in the face. That sizable schnoz piece is designed to filter out the dust kicked up by a herd that used to be million strong. It's like a built-in respirator that also makes them look like Alf's illegitimate child. I realize that's a dated reference, so here's Alf, and here's a Saiga. Yeah, he's not wrong. I'm gonna go ahead and guess that Alf was probably designed off of 
this extremely obscure animal I've never seen in my entire life, bro. Most likely. You see it too, right? Now you might be wondering, yeah, yeah, can that nose. nose be used to amplify mating calls and increase their chances with- And it's full of like fat, because every time he jiggles it, it jiggles like a phallus. Females who sexually select for bigger noses, and you're absolutely right, they do use their noses to amplify mating calls and increase their chances with females who sexually select for bigger noses. Because size queens come in many forms. And right. speaking of female validation, <laughs> eligible bachelors will run phase with each other using those horns in order to gain control of a harem. Unfortunately, those horns can get them laid and laid to rest, since Zygas have been victims of poaching and that in disease and habitat loss nearly has this Narnia goat's entire population in the gulag. Today, okay. they're critically endangered and found only one place in the world, in Go the ahead. dry grasslands and semi-deserts of Central Asia. But that's too depressing, so here's a baby saiga. Now here's two baby saigas, but you wanna know what's even more depressing? There's Go a ahead. good percentage of the population that doesn't realize that narwhals are real. Yeah, we, we didn't make those up. They really do be out here swimming in the ocean, causing a commotion, because they're just so awesome. It's what an aquatic that? unicorn, except that horn is actually a giant inside-out tooth with millions of nerve endings. We used to think that narwhals use this single tooth overbite for violence, but with how sensitive it is, it's much more likely that it just tells the whale about the world around it, similar to cat whiskers. Also, that tooth is flexible, and they can bend it a foot in any direction, and I didn't even know that until this video. One reason we don't know more about them is because narwhals are painfully shy introverts that can legitimately get flatlined by panic attacks. When narwhals get pressed or stressed, their heart rates will slow all the way down to three to four beats a minute. A wow. slow heart rate is great for swimming in ice water all day, but a heart deciding to work part-time while you're fighting for your life is a good way to see the gates. And with a crippling fear of people, human interaction can put nature's anxiety whale on life support. But even this high-strung struggle cetacean has an unlikely friend. In 2016, scientists noticed a male narwhal traveling with a pod of beluga whales, and ever since then, they've watched him run with the belugas like he was one of their own. But there's a good chance this is more than just a friend situation. Because okay. narluga isn't a ship name, it's the result of a beluga and a narwhal hooking up and creating a hybrid. Which they can do, since somehow an eternal extrovert and a whale with a literal self-destruct setting for social interaction are related. Speaking okay. of related, you know how I said the main wolf isn't actually a- I'm gonna be honest, that's a that's a very odd looking animal. Wolf guys. or a fox? Well, I can give you a- I just don't know why you'd have a horn in the ocean. I mean, how he defined it makes all the sense of the world is probably true, but- I still don't know why an animal would have a horn in the ocean. 100 tries. You'll never guess this deer dog's closest it just canine doesn't make cousin. And that's because it's an animal a lot sense. of y'all probably didn't even know existed. And that would be the South American bush dog. Even though they look like that meme of 5'11 versus 6 foot. We all have that brother, sister, or cousin we swear stole height from us. Evidently, the main right. wolf took all the legs in the family and turned the bush dog into an ankle biter. I can only make this joke so many times, but if you took one look at them and thought they were a wolverine or an undercooked bear or even a... Yeah, I would have guessed wolverine, but looking at it, it's not. Undercooked bear? Oh. Really confused Tasmanian devil, nobody would blame you. Especially since for a while, we thought this weasel beagle went extinct. It took a few years for us to realize they didn't get discontinued and even longer to put them in the canine club. Bush dogs live in packs and they're kind of like the African wild dogs of the okay, Amazon. So tiny. But instead of running prey down on land, bush dogs would rather ambush ops in water, which they're really good at thanks to webbed feet, their ability to dive, but most importantly, the power of friendship. They usually go for small rodents, birds, lizards, and the occasional capybara. But bush dogs have been on record murking a taper after chasing it around for hours. A the same taper? taper that can weigh about two prime shacks at nearly 700 pounds. Yeah, the power of friendship. Finding one bush dog, oh, let alone wow. a whole pack, is veteran level difficult. But if you happen to be walking through the jungle and smell salad, you might just get lucky because the scent signature they mark their territory with gives a strong oh, impression. Wow, of is, that, is that how so you since do they it? can fold a several hundred pound horse cow? Luck. Listen, I'm almost positive there was no need for you to lift your legs up like that. All right might not be the right word. You need more than luck to catch this cat. The okay. clouded leopard is so secretive and so introverted that we honestly don't know a whole lot about them. We do know that they easily earn gold medal for tree climbing, even for a cat. They can rotate their ankles 180 degrees, which means unlike most other cats, clouded leopards can climb down a tree head first. They'll even cross wow. a branch upside down for no other reason but to flex. In fact, their entire existence is a flex. It's widely believed that this overcast kitty diverged from the common ancestor of the panther and cats up to 9 million years ago. Not not only does that make them it's the most species beautiful. of cat alive today, it also makes them a living fossil. You see, on the left is the skull of a clouded leopard, and on the left. right is the headpiece of Smilodon, aka a prehistoric predator of the saber-tooth variety. In fact, clouded leopards often get called the modern-day saber-tooth because they have the longest canine teeth of any cat relative to body size. That's longer than lions, tigers, and even the Caymus paralysis demon, the jaguar. Also, despite its name, it's not technically a leopard, and while you could call it the smallest of big cats, scientists widely believe that the clouded leopard is actually the link between big cats and small cats. Big cats referring to lions, tigers, jaguars, leopards, and snow leopards. 
which also aren't even real leopards either, and small cats being the rest, like cheetahs, pumas, ocelots, and of course domestic cats. Also, it's not really a size thing, it's more like, like big cats can roar but can't purr, and small cats can purr but can't roar. Clouded leopards can't do either, instead they do this. Like house cats, kinda. I, that's the closest. I hope you that can made get. sense. I feel like that yeah, got yeah. complicated. No, no, no. You just, you just, you proved it to me. Yeah, that definitely is the link between these gigantic cats and the small cats. It has to be. Um, if that small cat sounds kind of like a house cat, it makes house cat noises a little bit. I mean, it can't make like the perfect meow, right? But it's pretty close. And it gets even more complicated with this next animal. Because what do a manatee, a dugong, and an elephant all have in common? They're obviously all the same animal, just different. Uh, you know. Different species, maybe, guys. That doesn't make any sense. They're all the same animal, but they're just like different adaptations of said animal, if that makes any sense. That's what it looks like, at least, because they all have the same, like, you know, weird, scaly, dry skin that looks like it needs lotion. They end up at the same family reunion as the rock hyrax. That's right, this African boulder gerbil, this marmot from the motherlands, okay. is cousins with the biggest thing on earth with legs. The hyrax is also clade mates with aardvarks, elephant shrews, and tenrix. It makes less sense the harder you think about it. Although in their defense, hyraxes have the same tusks that elephants do, but like with the main wolf and the bush dog, someone had to get the short end. And did they ever? Hyraxes also can't really control their body temperature, despite that being one of the first rules of being a mammal. So to fight okay. the fact that nature made them as close to cold-blooded as a mammal can get, hyraxes spend most of their time basking in the sun. I used to think they were just chill like that, but apparently chill is exactly what they're trying to avoid. Also, they make a sound that's almost a guaranteed trip to therapy if you ever hear it in person. I'm not going to do this for every animal, but I could not not add this. Go ahead. <laughs> Imagine. Do it again. This thing has more in common with mammoths than it does with hamsters. I want that to sink in. And the only thing right, arguably more woolly, unbelievable right? than that is whales and dolphins being the closest living relatives of hippos. At this point, nothing really needs to be said. Nah, come on, bro. That's obvious. That's that's obvious. We all know hippos are homicidal demon pigs with the temperament of a landmine. In, fa in fact, I'm pretty sure they're only Google famous the same way Logan Paul was back in 2017. If you know, you know. But what a lot of people don't know is the tiny travel size version that lives today. The pygmy hippo is five times smaller and half as tall as their murderous cousins. They're okay. also forest animals, solitary and naturally shy, and they're much less of a threat to humanity. Just don't go and tell them that. You know, this one's name is Sweet Pork. I'm not even making Yeah, but that bite force is probably crazy. I mean, if they're anywhere near, I guess it's a pygmy hippo. Um, I'm sure the bite force is probably still absolutely wild. In that up. Like basically every other animal, they can be on demon timing if you push them enough. But okay. clearly the aquatic oppression horse stole all their ill will, because no shot could you slap one dead in the face and not end up dead with no trace. Huh. Well, I'm not afraid to admit when I'm wrong. Now you've definitely heard of this next animal before. It's just that the last time you probably did, Chris Rock and Jada Smith were on speaking and not slapping terms. And of course, we're talking about Madagascar's top predator and the bane to lemurs everywhere, the Fusa. Although with its spelling, I'm pretty sure it's actually Fossa, but the day I pronounce it like that is the day I lay my childhood to rest. The Fusa is pretty much a Madagascar mongoose. And if you know how psychotic mongoose are, you'll understand why the lemur population treated them like terrorists. But one thing I never realized because of the movie is they're not that much bigger than the lemurs they eat. And they have the same flexible exorcist ankles as the clouded leopard, meaning trees are pretty much their home court, especially since they have tails longer than a Monday to keep balance. Fusas also have, I'm gonna say, interesting mating practices. And once again, I wanna stay monetized, so I'm not gonna step in that minefield. Appreciate that. Just know that if you follow a female Fusa long enough, you might not hear the choo-choo, but you will see a train. And while oh. it's usually lemurs taking the L as apex predators, this monkey cat murks Whoa. anything that doesn't cook them first. <laughs> Sometimes they'll even work together with one climbing a tree to scare prey onto the ground where the partner can retire their will to live. Not bad. Also, I know you see that flex. But there's no bigger flex than this next animal soloing the U.S. Navy. Back in the 70s, U.S. nuclear submarines were forced to fall back after they took damage to the rubber neoprene layer covering the sensitive sonar domes. This compromised their navigation, and at first people were rushing to the conclusion that the commies had gotten one over on them. What actually happened was that out of the over 500 species of sharks, the US Navy managed to get griefed by one of the smallest. The cookie cutter shark is only about a foot and a half, and these giant killers feed on some of the biggest animals in history for a living. They got their name because this parasite will swim up to a whale and then use its jaws to slice out a perfectly circle-shaped piece of flesh. It doesn't kill them, but the sea hickey it leaves behind is for life. It's like a parasite tramp stamp. And it's not just whales, anything from seals, to killer whales, to even other sharks can get it. On rare occasions, even some humans find out the bitey way. 
In the 80s, up to 30 US submarines allegedly took damage from the cookie cutter's dental, to the point where the only solution was a fiberglass coating. We always talk about great whites, tiger sharks, bull sharks, but none of them can say they successfully committed hit and runs on a superpower's navy, and with a resume like that, they definitely deserve to get talked about more. But right. yeah, that's gonna do it for this video. If you learned something from this video, kindly consider checking out my book, 100 Animals That Can Effing End You. Guys, his book is amazing. Check it out. I definitely got it uh, for my kid, and he loves it, bro. So I'm telling you, the book is, yeah. Link in the description. <laughs> it's great. It's great, And if you great, knew all guys. 10 of these animals already, you have my respect. Drink water. Get Yeah, I knew none of them. Son, hug your moms. I'm going to see y'all in the next one. Definitely hug your mother. All right. Do that. Do that immediately if you can. Guys, listen. Um, I knew none of these animals. Um, at all. I wish I kind of did. I'm terrible at animals, guys. This is like a... It's like a blind spot for me, guys. Absolutely. But the thing about this video that mainly stuck out to me was the existence of whatever this monstrosity is and how it came to be. Right? Um, I just don't know how and why a... a Ten what, animals you either didn't know existed. Or yeah. I don't know how or why a giraffe would, you know, stoop down to the level of a, of a zebra and, and, you know, and copulate and create this monstrosity, right? Um, I think it's interesting to look at or encounter. And the reason why I'm stuck on a, z on a giraffe is because of this right here. It just feels like a giraffe, guys. I don't know, I could be wrong. Um, why is it also a zebra? How is it also a horse? How is it so perfectly defined as these things, guys, right? Like how, how do we even come up with this thing, guys? Please help me. <laughs> oh, guys, please help me. I beg you guys, please help me. All right. Listen, you guys all have an absolutely amazing day. And when he, whenever he does drop another video, we'll uh, jump back into those guys. All right. All right. Enjoy your day.